Greetings viewers and welcome back. Today's video, we're back on Bug Eye Resurrection. The customer called me up the other day. They want to go ahead and do the time belt water pump replacement on the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and pull the engine, replace the clutch, and also do an engine reseal while we're in here. There's a few other issues that have come up. Uh, since the time I talked to the customer, when he brought me the car, he's figured out that there is a boost leak somewhere, so we gotta figure that out. I have found a couple of cracks in the vacuum lines at the wastegate, uh, the wastegate actuator rod, the uh, stir clip there that holds it onto the actuator for the turbo is missing. There is a bolt, uh, a stud broken from the up pipe to the turbo flange. The gasket between the down pipe and the back of the turbo is missing, we can see. So quite a bit more involved than just a straight, uh, straightforward engine removal, clutch replacement, time belt, water pump replacement. So, as I showed in the other video, I've got this random relay here and wires all over, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of rigged up stuff I need to figure out as I pull this apart. Like here's the uh, washer pump is just hanging out. The cap is missing and the pump is out of the reservoir, so a lot of hodgepodgey stuff on this thing. So we are gonna get into this now. We're gonna go ahead and start by pulling the pressure cap off of the turbo coolant reservoir. So that said, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, before I forget, let's go ahead and get this battery disconnected and removed before we get under the car to drain the coolant. What in the world do we have here? That is the weirdest battery clamp I've seen. So we'll get the battery out of the way and the battery tray. All right, now we can go ahead and remove, uh, get the car up in the air, drain the coolant and tackle what we need to get loose underneath the car. All right, so we could pull the pet cot and drain the cooling system that way, but it usually makes a big mess because it is directly over this uh, part of the subframe here. So what we're gonna do is just yank the bottom hose and try to get out of the way and not make a giant mess. Well, that went far better than it has in some other videos. Okay, so while the cooling system still continues to drain, we're gonna go ahead and remove the lower nuts. There's one on this side of the transmission and one on this side of the transmission. Should be a 14 millimeter, although it looks like someone's removed this engine once before. And a couple of the fasteners on the bell housing look like they're not factory so typically it's a 14 millimeter nut I'm not sure what it is in this case and wasn't even tight all the way but that makes getting it apart a lot easier although yes it still is the factory factory 14 millimeter nuts Remove the nut and remove the washer behind it. 
while we're down here, we may as well go ahead and remove the lower bolt for the starter and the lower bell housing bolts. Uh, they'll be a little bit easier to access probably under the hood, but if we can get them pretty easily down here, we might as well go ahead and take them out while we're under here. our lower starter bolt, also a 14 millimeter. All right, so I went ahead and removed uh, the other 14 millimeter bolt. It's below the starter bolt and above the 14 millimeter nut on the driver's side. And I removed the two 14 millimeter uh, bolts on the passenger side, one above the nut and the one above it, right beside the turbocharger. So now we're gonna remove the two 14 millimeter nuts that are used to secure the engine mount to the cross member. So one over here and one directly across it. You know, since we're gonna go ahead and be removing the oil pan and resealing it, and um, everything else we're gonna be doing, we might as well go ahead, drain the engine oil, remove the filter, drain that out before we proceed. Aside from that, basically everything we need to do underneath the car is covered. Uh, we might have to get some of the downpipe nuts underneath here, uh, but the majority of the rest of everything else should be done uh, up top side. All right guys, so real quick before I get out from under here, I pulled uh, the Drain the oil out, I went ahead and pulled the three nuts, one here, one here, and one back here at the bottom of the uh, downpipe. That'll make it easier to remove once we get back up top side. All right, now that we've got everything handled underneath the car, we're gonna go ahead and remove this washer jug and a few other items. Don't actually have to come out, but it just makes it easier to get access around the engine and the engine bay. All right, so we can go ahead and remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold our washer reservoir in place. And remove it. Now we've got that out of the way, we might as well go ahead and remove our upper radiator hose, get these coolant lines here removed, and go ahead and disconnect the fans and pull the radiator out of the way. Yeah, someone's definitely been in here before because the coolant lines are not ran correctly, nor is the power steering. And the brackets are bent. But again, what do you expect out of a 2002 WRX with 200,000 miles on it through multiple owners and modifications? So remove the two 10 millimeter bolts here, then we can move this hose hard line out of the way. 
Now we'll go ahead and loosen our upper radiator hose clamp. And remove our hose. All right, so now that's out of the way, we're gonna remove the little hose clamp here and pull this coolant line off. Tuck it out of the way temporarily. I'm gonna pull the power steering hose up out of the clamp. I'm going to depress the tab over here on the bracket that holds the power steering reservoir in place and pull the reservoir up. So there's just a little metal clip there you pull back and then slide the reservoir up out of the holder just to give us a little wiggle room to get our fan out past the radiator hose, I mean past the power steering hose. So now we're going to reach down and unplug the cooling fans. Connectors are on either side. There's a tab in the middle you pull up on and slide the connector out. There's one. Second one's over here. Can usually easily be done one-handed. I say that as I reach in with two hands for that one. All right, so now that the fans are unplugged, we can remove the 10 millimeter bolts here that hold the fan housing to the radiator. Now that's done, you can just lift your fans straight up and out. Set them to the side. All right, now that our fans are out, we will remove the two 12 millimeter bolts here and here that are holding the retaining clamp for the radiator. We'll remove these. Now we can pull our radiator out. All right, now that we got that out of the way, we'll go ahead and remove our intake. Loosen the clamp. Disconnect the mass air sensor. Now we'll go ahead and remove those two coolant lines we removed earlier up here from the turbo coolant reservoir. Set these aside. Since we're already here, we'll go ahead and disconnect our front oxygen sensor and tuck this in with the engine. We'll go ahead and remove 
our other pigtails here. And the vacuum line here. Let's be careful with these lines because they're probably brittle from age and heat cycles. And tuck them out of the way with the mass air wiring. So we're going to disconnect this harness here, which I believe is the exhaust temperature sensor. And we'll set that to the side. All right, now we'll go ahead and remove this 10 millimeter here. And we're gonna get this uh, coolant reservoir loose so we can get the power steering lines loose. So we can pull that over with the pump when we get to taking that off. Got that loose. We'll be able to pull our power steering lines over when we get to removing the pump. All right, now we're going to go ahead and remove our drive belts. So 12 millimeters. like the tensioner for this is broken off. So, belt's off. AC belt off. Alright, so we'll go ahead and disconnect the alternator. Got a 12 millimeter nut here on top. For our main battery feed. And one squeeze connector here at the back. And 
as common with most of them, the clip was already broken off, so just pull it out. Also, we'll go ahead and disconnect AT compressor clutch. Put this wire and this back and off to the side. All right, now we can go ahead and finish removing the alternator. This is not correct, but this uh, alternator bracket and tensioner has been broken, so this is the way they have it rigged up. All right, now that the alternator's taken care of and out of the way, we'll go ahead and remove our power steering pump and set it to the side. We're gonna need to remove this white connector here or disconnect it. Now we've got 12 millimeter bolt down and back here. We've got one here and one here. All right, once you've got those three bolts removed, you can pull the power steering pump forward. Hold the reservoir up to free those lines. and swing it around and set it to the side. All right, now the power steering is out of the way, we can go ahead and start getting our AC compressor out of the way. We'll take the alternator and AC wire, pull it over under the AC lines here and pull it back out of the way with our battery cable. We have two connectors down here to disconnect. All right, so AC compressor has four, four 14 millimeter bolts holding it in place.
the, the four 14 millimeter bolts, there's one here, 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 and directly below it. There's also one right here that holds another part of the blower bracket to the engine block. All right, so on the AC compressor, I forgot on the WRX, this back 14 millimeter bolt is inaccessible. So you have a 14 millimeter bolt directly behind the compressor. You've got one here to the side and one here on the front. You remove those three 14 millimeters along with that one and you can pull the compressor forward with the bracket on it. Then you can remove this rear bolt here and bolt the bracket back on. I like to use this bracket because it's got a built in place to put the uh, load leveler for the engine hoist. All right, so got the bolt broken loose, got the bottom bracket off, got that set aside. We're bolting this bracket back up here. Uh, this bolt right behind the compressor is a pretty tricky one to get to. The way I got it is using a shallow 3 8 chrome 14 mil socket and a chrome universal joint on a long extension. You can just barely sneak in there to get that bolt taken out. All right, so our AC compressor is free and it's just going to sit right here until we're ready to pull the engine. All right, so now's a good a time of any to go ahead and get the intercooler out of the way. So we've got 12 millimeter bolt on either side. This one we only have on this side. Due to the modifications, the bracket and mounting is all gone as well as the heat shield for the turbo. Also going to remove the recirculation valve, or in this case, we've got a blow-off valve. Not exactly sure how they got it on here. Because I can't get a socket on there. Hmm. So we'll go ahead and remove. All right, so we have an eight millimeter hose clamp we need to remove here at the throttle body, as well as an eight millimeter hose clamp we need to remove at the turbo outlet to the Y pipe to the back of the intercooler. Or maybe this uh, outlet unscrews. Yep, there we go. So we'll get that out of the way, get the other 12 removed and remove those hose clamps. Now the intercooler comes out. Now the intercooler's out of the way, we can remove our heater hoses, our starter, we can remove our fuel lines, 
the remaining bell housing bolts, and we're basically ready to pull the engine out. Okay, looking here at this relay, I don't know what's going on here, but this is tied into the starter solenoid. We've got the solenoid wire here from the car going into this relay. Out of this relay comes a white wire that goes to the solenoid. Then we have a power and ground on the relay as well. So not sure what we got going on here or why this is rigged up this way. All right, so let's go ahead and get these heater hoses disconnected. And then we'll get the starter removed. Removing the positive battery terminal from the starter. Remove the ground wire and the starter. All right, now we'll move the manual transmission dipstick out of the way. Get the remaining bell housing bolt. All right, now we can remove the remaining fasteners for the downpipe. All right, so our downpipe should be free of our turbo now. And it is.
All right, so now we'll go ahead and loosen the throttle cable and cable for our cruise control. All right, cruise control cable out of the way. And we'll wrap that around and set it off to the side. Throttle cable out. And move it off to the side as well. All right, so now we can go ahead and remove our fuel lines. All right, fuel lines loose. Now we can remove the vacuum line for the brake booster, which the clamp is not even in place. It's slid up and not there, so that was super loose. There's another possible area if we had a vacuum leak. So yeah, someone's definitely been messing in this engine. All right, so we're nearly ready to pull the engine out. All we gotta do now is release the transmission from the engine. We got to remove where the clutch fork engages the transmission. So there's a 10 millimeter hex head plug here that we need to remove. Didn't need to remove it with quite such force. All right, so we pull this plug out. And that'll give us access to the rod that runs through the clutch fork. The reason we have to do this on the WRX is because the release bearing actually clips into the 
pressure plate rather than riding on the outside of it like the naturally aspirated Subaru. So we have to pull this rod to allow the fork to come out and allow it to let go of the release bearing when separating the engine and the transmission. So. All right, now that cover's out of the way, we need to thread a bolt into the end of this rod. I believe this bolt is a six mil by one or 1 1.5 thread pitch. It's actually a valve body bolt out of a GM 4L60E transmission. So we've got that threaded in there now. Grab a hold and pull her out. All right, now we should be ready to get the chains on and get this engine out of this car. All right, engine load leveler is on, engine hoist is hooked up. All we gotta do now is put floor jack under the transmission, jack it up a hair. We want the studs on the engine mounts to just clear the cross member. Then we can start lifting and pulling the engine from the transmission up and out of the engine bay.
right, so our engine is now out. Looking at this, we've got an aftermarket clutch. We've got an ATC clutch. It looks like it's got a lot of wear and tear and age on it. Paint's peeling off of it. Release bearing is uh, fairly quiet, but not the smoothest in the world. A lot of rust on the flywheel. So we're gonna get this all taken apart. Uh, check the condition of the clutch. I already got a new clutch kit for this car just based on how it was uh, slipping. So we're probably gonna end up replacing the clutch either way. I uh, don't think this aftermarket clutch is any good anymore. I'm gonna need to get a new downpipe uh, turbo gasket. Got a lot of oil residue here in the throttle body. Other than that, nothing uh, too crazy. Got a lot of gunk in the engine bay on the cross member to get rid of. I'm um, assuming with all this down here, we got a rear main or air oil separator plate or piston pin, wrist pin, piston, wrist pin access cover O-ring leaking. Got all three, we're gonna replace all three while we're in here. Real quick, here is our clutch fork. So this was the deal, you pulled the pin out of here and that allowed that to slip out because as you see, the clutch fork slides inside of the release bearing on this design. So there's no way to get it out this way. It actually locks in to the pressure plate. So. That's uh, our engine removal. So in the next episodes, we're gonna strip the clutch off. We're gonna do the, all the seals and gaskets, get it on the engine stand, redo the oil pan gasket, oil pump, all that good stuff. We're gonna clean up the inside bell housing of the transmission, clean up the cross member. We're gonna go ahead and put our new parts in and get it ready for reinstallation. And that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.